Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. From Acts. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts people from every nation who fear God and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord has exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. 
but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from 1 Corinthians. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a human being. But for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each one in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands his, the, over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. 
the cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel story begins today with Mary, grief-stricken, standing outside the tomb, overcome with grief because Jesus was crucified cruelly, because Jesus was died and now he was, well, he had been buried here, but his body was gone indignity and insult to all that had happened to him. So she ran to Peter and John, and they came, and they looked inside the tomb and went away uncertain of what had transpired. And then Jesus appeared to Mary, and whether it was the tears that blurred her vision, her overwhelming grief that told her that this could not possibly be, or whether the trans formed body of Jesus looked somehow different. She did not realize it was Jesus until he spoke her name, Mary. And then all of the warmth filled her heart. All the joy of the resurrection came to her in a rush. I spoke to you on Palm Sunday about the determination that Jesus had in his steadfastness going to the cross. As Isaiah put it, I have set my face like flint. I spoke to you on Good Friday two days ago about the task that Jesus had completed, had fulfilled. It was all done in its fullness. And he expressed that in the last word on the cross, it is finished. Today we live... <laughs> Here on Easter Day, we live in the joy of the completion of that task. But that joy is special and particular. There are times in our lives when we, as I mentioned on Friday, have completed some task. We have a sense of pleasure or pride or satisfaction about having done that. But there are also times when we feel a sense of freedom. In 1986, my wife and I and our three small boys traveled across the country, towing a travel trailer behind us out to the West Coast to Expo 86. This was before cell phones, before the internet. So there we were, disconnected from our daily lives, free from all of the parish responsibilities, 
totally just us as a family traveling. And there was a great sense of relief and freedom involved in that, knowing that we left everything behind that could burden us. I felt a similar sense of relief when finally, 10 years ago now, I retired after nearly 40 years in serving every day in parish ministry. It was a joy for me to be able to look forward to more time with my family, time for art, time for meditation, time for writing, for doing lots of things. So in laying one thing down and picking something else up, there was great joy for me. When you look into your past, when you look into your life, you may find that there are times when you've experienced a renewal, a refreshment. And it might be when you moved to a new house, when you had a new child, when your children were grown up, when you retired. It might have been a moment of deep reflection in the presence of God. It might have been a moment of spiritual awakening. Perhaps it was a time when you experienced a breakthrough with a therapist, either your physiotherapist when you finally had a muscle release or with a psychotherapist when finally windows and doors opened in your mind and you felt finally at peace. There are moments in our lives where all of a sudden something breaks through and we face something new. Sometimes it's simply an awareness of how the world works. Sometimes it's an awareness of how our own inner being works. And it is our inner being and the health of our inner being, the freedom of our inner being, that gives us the opportunity for joy in every situation. Paul said to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always, in all things give thanks. If we have within ourselves a freedom, a joy, no restrictions, nothing holding us back, then we can truly be free and truly rejoice. A book which affected me many years ago, Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, he expressed the joy that he experienced in the concentration camps during the Second World War under the oppressive regime of the Nazis. As he, as a Jew, suffered terribly he still had within himself joy, his sure and certain knowledge of who he was in the presence of God. What Christ did for us on the cross was open the door for us to let go of all of the burdens that weigh upon us. It's like chains around our wrists and around our feet at times. When we feel like we can't do anything, we can't go anywhere, we can't praise God because we know, well, there is this thing within our lives which is sinful. We can't truly love another person because we know we are not worthy inside. And that's precisely what Jesus came to do. That's exactly what the cross was about, was to speak to our own inner being and tell us that Christ has forgiven us, Christ has redeemed us. When we understand that freedom, when we understand that forgiveness, it's like a new day has dawned. It's like all the old has gone away. As Paul said, I'm a new creature. All the old has passed away. I'm a new person in Christ. When we embrace that newness, when we embrace that freedom, when we know within the depths of our heart that we are forgiven, that we are free, that we can live and love and serve without hindrance, then truly we will know joy. Then the joy of the knowledge of God will flood through us. And in that situation, it doesn't matter what the circumstances of life are. It doesn't matter how difficult our day is. It doesn't matter how difficult our life is. If there is within the core of our being an awareness 
of God's love for us, an awareness of our own goodness in the presence of God, then we can face any trial. The disciples all came to know that. They all came to know the joy of the resurrection. They knew the forgiveness of Christ. They then began to go and preach and teach and heal and spread the good news of the resurrection of Jesus to everyone they met all around the Mediterranean, all of what they knew to be the whole world. And in the process, all but one met their death. But each one met their death with joy in their hearts, with peace in their hearts, knowing that before God, they had been made whole. So, beloved, today we rejoice. On this, the greatest days of the year, the day of the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power wars and famine may cease through all the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to the everlasting banquet. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon us and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, sea has spreading, tree has grown, healing leads all Unbounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection not a servant but a friend Jesus is our strong companion joy and peace shall never end Christ is risen earth and heaven never more shall be the same break the bread of new creation where the world is still in pain tell its grim demonic chorus Christ is risen get you gone God the first and last is with us sing Hosanna everyone In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at any and every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given us this day. I invite you to mention the blessings most dear to you. We thank you that you are with us in the sacrament, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life, until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. 
Go forth into the world rejoicing in the joy of the resurrection. Thanks be to God. Neither might the gates of death 